election consequences don't start. <laughs> Uh, I just said they go, they give one full estate to have a bag of rice to share. <laughs> <laughs> the chairman of the estate, he carried the rice, they complain. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? <laughs> How many are we in this estate? <laughs> Did we tell you people that we are beggars? <laughs> <laughs> we brought out our time to come for you. <laughs> now you're surprising us. <laughs> Is this the surprise you promised? <laughs> that is government of the people that is supposed to be for the people. <laughs> Don't go carry the food meant for the people chop. <laughs> Go, 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 give the people the remaining. <laughs> that is, take this one no, before I go talk, say I don't do anything. <laughs> it don't be like, say, when Nepa take light for 24 hours, just flash a pew pew. <laughs> so that if they ask you when they take the light, you go say, they big up now, no, take up. <laughs> Hey, the best we say, the same people when they comfortable with the government as far as saying our own, and then they complain say super ego, not they play well. <laughs> Can you change that go keeper? <laughs> if keeper is not doing well, change him. <laughs> but no, no green change government when no they do well. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> <laughs> I have been to say this. If anything happened, it will begin to affect one particular people. <laughs> it shocked me saying that people will vote, it begin to affect. <laughs> if you touch anybody, we vote to APC now. You go tell you, say, Una own better now. You be like, Una see what it go happen. Our hope was so high. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to invest any APC person now, if you want to make a BP high, just pass toxic. Ah, dollar. Oh. <laughs> they know they use here, yeah, here, yeah, dollar. You're going to be the license, they are live one end. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Why are you greeting me? <laughs> you give me full job. <laughs> Go tell us, I just say now your best is dead. You know my name. <laughs> Don't be only vote a vote. <laughs> <laughs> you know, say before, if person won't beg you money, you tell you, say, I beg, give me 10,000 naira, I'll give you next week. Yes. <laughs> APC is a beg like that now because they don't care. I'm telling you. I beg, give me 10,000. When you go pay me back, eh? give me the 10,000 first. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> Mama Mia. Black I want so, sir. I am the chairman of Shokaya. For now, I am the chairman. Shokaya CDA. And I was just at home now, and uh, they brought this for me as palliative for the whole of Shokaya estate. In this estate, we have 147 houses with families and tenants living there. I'm confused now. I don't know how to share this for 147 households in Shokaya estate. If you guys, the government, I'm talking to Dako Abiodun now. If you people know you cannot do something, don't do it. We are not hungry, we are not beggars. So we don't need your rice as palliative. This is not even one bag. This is not up to an eighth of a bag of rice. So if you like king be rice, you can cover me with the love of the people who do. Come back with us, you guys. Then we put on. Come back with our mom. Ah, she let be alone. Then you say, "Well, let be." So that is it. We don't need this rice. If you want to give us palliative, don't insult us. 
This is an insult. Shokaya Estate refused to be insulted. God bless you. Uh, situation uh, is one that's important for a time like this because the similarities are just <laughs> incredible. And to think that it was a 1993 election and now we are dealing with a 2023 election. <laughs> so there is definitely a cyclical pattern of repeat of bad stuff uh, in our country. And that really should be the basis on which this uh, desire to ignite some form of a never say never again is uh, critical. You know, I just happened to have been one of those who voted for the first time in that 1993 part. And the reason was, I mean, we grew up mostly with military rule. And at the time that I could have first voted, which was the 1979 election, that was by the time I had, I could claim to be 18, you know, to be of, of age to, to vote. We were in the university. And so when elections were on, it didn't concern us really. We, I, I didn't concern us. I was far away in Nonsuka. What was our own with registering to vote or anything? It just wasn't part of the traditional cultural thing for us at that time. So, of course, we didn't vote in, in 1979. It was by the, um, uh, the next time we had anything that had to do with elections. It just turned out to be 1993. Can you imagine? 1993. That was when we then got the opportunity to vote. So when Pat first wrote Never Again, and then followed up with um, Atedu as well as um, Samuni, to put out a spread in the newspaper asking all professionals to not continue to behave as if the situation in the country did not concern them. They, they, well, they were speaking to the choir because I was already, you know, uh, very much there myself. And um, at that time, I was already a co-founder of Transparency International. So it really was down my alleyway to just step out and be part of that uh, movement. And as he said, over time, we had uh, different sets of leadership. And, um, and for me, I think that a critical thing in this gathering is, is to actually do an evaluation of where we are. Because sometimes we are too quick to think that nothing has changed, whereas a lot has changed. One thing that I know has changed, Pat, is that, look, if the young people looked into this hall and saw us, they would think we're stupid. Do you know why? Because, frankly speaking, they think that we're part of the problem. When they look at our age, they simply think, surely you did nothing to salvage Nigeria. So, you know, sitting around the table with you is not my interest. And that, we know, is there's a reason for it. They have watched people in our generation fail them over and over again. So they basically tie everybody with a brush. But in identifying that something has indeed changed, we can also say the same young people look at people from the perspective of what they have stood for and align with those people. So that's why, for example, you can look at some of those that they would love to be associated with, and you see clearly that what they are in search of are people who symbolize the values that they are eager to write. And so if that is the case, then we're closer to a rallying point of what would simply not create tension and dichotomies amongst those of us that want a different society alongside the younger generation that have basically mobilized themselves into a movement. The truth be told, <laughs> some of the people who have taken the biggest bashing for taking a stand around the matter of values are outside of the, um, uh, what do you call it, the regional enclave that the, their leaders represent. Isn't that the case? They've taken a big bashing. And what is it that they've been bashed for? It's been for standing on values. So, ladies and gentlemen, I do think that our work is cut out for us. We really just simply need to say, truly, who are those that don't have a threshold of what 
integrity is. Because that's, that's really what, what this is about, part. But I have seen over time that Nigerians process integrity on the basis of thresholds. Some would keep integrity when it is only $50 million involved. I feel 50 million naira, forgive me. As soon as it turns to 500 million naira, they tell you that that threshold of integrity, they can't continue with. <laughs> Some would keep that integrity up until 500 million. Then when 5 billion is on the table, they say a whole 5 billion, please. You know, after 5 billion, I can manage to find a way around integrity. And then some would say, oh, five billion, I can still keep my integrity, until you tell them that it's 50 billion that's on the table. Then they say 50 billion. Uh, do you mean 50 billion? Please, carry your integrity and go. <laughs> so how can you build anything out of this contextual definition of what integrity is? And yet we know that integrity is the core of the institutions that societies build. Because integrity encompasses everything that you can imagine in terms of standing for the public values that are outside of personal interest and benefit. To stand for public values that are outside of your personal interest and benefit. That's what a, a person of character really epitomizes. My father would say to us that character is the lasting currency. Every other currency could go out of fashion. A central bank can just come and just change the denominator or the denomination. But character will never go out of fashion. It is a lasting currency, but that's what we're struggling with. At the School of Politics, Policy, and Governance, where Pat also teaches, we, we, we're training. We totally said that this problem is a problem first of weak, unstructured, fragile, demand side for a decent society, that is the electorate, not having the capacity to influence outcomes that are favorable even to themselves. And then we said the second part of it is the existing pipeline that supplies political leadership that is corrupted and that it is so entrenched that it inherently subordinates the public good for personal, private, and narrow interests. And then we said it is the existence of so-called institutions or constitution or regulatory systems that should regulate the relationship between the demand side and the supply side, but which has fallen adrift. And therefore, it is captive to the machinations of the supply side. 